now is the perfect time for retailers to accelerate digital transformation efforts and to experiment with solutions that may not have been high in the priority list before, but will help the business going forward. Those of us who were further along in our digital transformation efforts before this crisis are in a better position and um, the rest are realizing that uh, digitizing our processes uh, and start standard operating procedures is um, no longer optional. Product imagery, specifically how products are presented to customers in uh, e-commerce stores, is one of those procedures and one of the areas where technology is now available to digitize most of the processes associated with on-model product photography. If there was ever a time to experiment with tech like this, um, it's definitely now. How can you get technology to replace your traditional product shoots? How can you create more content that your normal product shoots can produce and do it faster and at a lower cost? This is what we are addressing with our view model product. Um, if you have not been showing your products on models, then by switching to on model product imagery, you will see increase in customer engagement and conversion. Uh, if you have been showing products on models, then chances are, are you are um, showing a sample size on a typical fashion model and possibly missing out on allowing the customer to connect with your products better by showing um, the item on a model she can relate to. The average American model is, uh, what, six feet tall and size zero, whereas the um, average American woman is uh, five foot four and between sizes 14 and 16. There is something to be said about being able to connect to a product better if it's seen on a model of similar size and built to a consumer. In fact, there have been studies that showed that if a product was shown on a model closest to the consumer's size, ethnicity, and age, the intent to purchase went up by over 200%. And we have done tests for some of our customers where we tested on-model versus non-model product shots. And we saw cons uh, customer engagement go up by about 40% and conversion uh, by about 20 to 60% and in, so in some cases even more. Our virtual models can change the game for apparel e-commerce. Every retailer knows that product photo shoots are time consuming and expensive. And during this pandemic, they're not even possible. So what's the alternative? And of course, uh, alternative is process automation. Using the latest developments in computer vision and AI, you can go to market at five times the speed of traditional photo shoots, uh, produce more content and save money at the same time. If size visualization is added to your uh, set of offerings, engagement of majority of the customers is likely to increase. And more importantly, the rate of product returns will surely decrease because size mismatch is one of the major contrib contributors uh, towards product returns. If you're adding size visualization, also along with generated models, you're essentially adding more content without adding additional operational costs of physically going out to get that extra content. If you think about it, the net benefit here is you will have saved a lot on your operational costs, your photo shoot costs. You would have reduced the lead time between photo shoot and getting the products actually on the site. And for the same investment, you're getting additional content on the site as well. The crisis, of course, forced all of us into being more frugal and fiscal responsible. Virtual models have an average, an advantage of um, uh, big savings. In some cases, we're seeing savings of up to 75%, depending on the current procedures. It also enables retailers to do things um, much more easily. For example, test new garment designs without producing samples. Um, we are all realizing that as retailers, we need to become smarter and more efficient in which products we bring to market. And we can no longer afford long lead times from design to production to store. That means that predicting demand and getting it right as, as right as possible will differentiate winners from losers. Again, here is um, where digitizing process can help. 
just imagine um, that instead of producing physical samples that takes time and associates with logistic costs, you could design and render a digital version of a garment and put it on a virtual model and then show it to customers, ask to vote on products uh, that they like, um, ask which sizes they would like in, uh, for this product, and then maybe ask about likelihood of purchase and the price that they're willing to pay and then apply machine learning techniques and get more precise data around your planning for both assortment and inventory planning. And that will allow you to bring smarter products in your in inventory and set an entry price that will extract maximum value and eliminate the need for future discounts. And overall, as a business, you can take decisions much faster and without incurring great costs and risks. We do know that um, on average, about 30% of apparel purchased online is returned. And there are many costs, of course, associated with returns from shipping to logistics, restocking, etc. So what can be done to help this? Um, goes back to customer interacting with product imagery and setting realistic expectations about the products that they will receive in a package. Um, aspirational buying is great, but if the fit isn't right, or the style does not flatter their size and body shape, or the um, uh, size of the bag is not what they were expecting, it will result in return. And uh, for handbags and accessories specifically, if it's difficult to judge the size of a product from an image, even if the dimensions of this product, this bag, are listed on the site, expectations are not met and return is a lot more likely. A lot of our customers are seeing up to 75% of uh, um, savings in, in their cost. Right. So definitely very um, price efficient. I think this model is obviously fantastic for a number of reasons. It does pose a number of logistical challenges. And I think the main logistical challenge at first was around the source, the best photography and making sure that it was, uh, you know, we had amazing editorial shot of each product. Uh, and as you can imagine, the logistics of sourcing from many different luxury makers and, you know, having a very distributed team because the Milaner team is all over the world yeah. um, are huge. And I think that's where you guys came in and, and really helped with the view model. And you're seeing a few of the, of the images that we created with you guys. Um, I think right now in these challenging times, this actually proved to be a lifesaver because uh, we literally can have models move uh, to uh, like travel to our photography studio in Milan. And so for the entire spring collection, we're going to have to rely heavily on view model um, to generate, you know, amazing uh, product photography and amazing, you know, model shots of our product. And uh, so this is literally like an example of how, you know, this technology became a life-saving necessary technology uh, at this time. Uh, but even before then, I mean, it was just an incredible cost savings, incredible time savings, and the ability to really have our customers experience, right? We're selling luxury goods. So it's super critical that our customers get to see what those products look like in context, because they're going to spend a lot of money on buying them. And our artisans spend many, many days crafting them. So so it's super critical that they get the best possible, their best possible shot at understanding what the product looks like before they purchase it. And this is what, um, what you guys do. And I think there's a couple of interesting stats around there that we noticed that make it even more interesting. Uh, the products with view model currently have a 40% uh, lift in uh, user engagement rate and a 150% uh, lift in conversion rate. So it's huge.